Hello students, welcome to today's lesson on chemical formula. So we're going to learn about how to write chemical formula. So before we begin of writing chemical formula, it's important that you know the naming of compounds and the rules so that you can identify the elements or the ions inside the chemical compound. Okay, so first of all, the first rule here, a compound made up of two elements has a name ending with IDE. So what does it mean? We go through some examples to give you a better understanding. First, we have sodium chloride. So the first element here is sodium. The second is actually chlorine. So because of the naming convention, we change it to chloride. So it's sodium chloride. Another example is zinc oxide. So the first element is actually zinc. The second is oxygen. So instead of writing oxygen, we write it as oxide. So the third example is carbon dioxide. So the first element here is carbon. And the second element here, because of di, di means two. So oxide is oxygen. So we have one carbon, two oxygen. So this is carbon dioxide. Okay, so second rule here, a compound that contains hydroxide, OH minus, will be called hydroxide. So the hydroxide ions here, we are referring, so we have one example, sodium hydroxide. So the first element here is sodium. The second uh, ions here is sodium hydroxide. We have sodium plus Na plus hydroxide OH minus. So we will get sodium hydroxide. Okay. So the third rule here is actually a compound that contains a negatively charged polyatomic ion containing oxygen has a name ending with ATE. So you must be wondering here, what is polyatomic ion? So this is a group of atoms coming together to form an ion. So, so this will contain oxygen atom in it. So we go through some example, a copper 2 sulfate. So we have copper Cu2 plus sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So the sulfate here, SO4 2 minus, is the polyatomic ion. So another example is sodium nitrate. We have Na plus. Nitrate is NO3 minus. So nitrate here, in this case, is the polyatomic ion. Another example would be calcium carbonate. Calcium Ca2 plus. Carbonate is CO3 2 minus. So if you see, sulfate, nitrate, carbonate are all polyatomic ions over here and they contain oxygen in it. Okay, so now we go through some examples on how to actually write the chemical formula. So the first example here is actually uh, aluminium oxide. So what you do is we sometimes we break it down to the cation and ion and this will allow you to identify the charges for the ions. Okay, so first of all, we have aluminium. So you go to the periodic table, identify the element aluminium. You will realize that aluminium is under group 3. So we give you Al3+. plus For oxide, same thing. You go to periodic table, you'll find that oxygen is in group 6. It will give you O2-. minus. Okay, so how do we write? First of all, we have aluminium 3 plus, oxygen is O2 minus. So you do a cross multiplication. Basically, you are bringing down the charges from one element to the other. So for aluminium, we are bringing down the charges from oxygen, which is 2 minus down. You get Al2 for oxygen. For, we are bringing down the 3 plus from aluminium. So you'll get O3. So you for aluminum oxide is Al2O3. Okay, so the next example here, we have magnesium oxide. So magnesium is Mg2 plus. Oxide is O2 minus. So let us go through here. Mg2 plus O2 minus. So when you do the cross multiplication, you get Mg2O2. So if you notice here, Magnesium and oxygen both have a 2. So there's a need for us to simplify them down because the 2 will cancel out. So we'll get MgO. So for magnesium oxide, it's actually MgO. Okay, take note of this concept that you need to simplify if 
across the whole chemical formula, they have the same number. Okay, so the next example here is copper 2 hydroxide. So copper 2 is Cu2 plus, hydroxide is OH minus. So how do we get, let's try it. Copper Cu2 plus OH minus. So when you do the cross multiplication, you get Cu. So if you see that hydroxide is a minus, so when you bring it down, it's actually a one. So there's no need for us to write the one down. Okay, because it's understood that we'll multiply by one for the copper. So next, for Cu2 plus, when we bring it down, because there's two elements or two atoms in it, we need to add in a bracket, OH, to add in the two. So this is important because we are multiplying the oxygen by two, the hydrogen also by two. So we need to bracket them for the naming convention, for the writing of the chemical formula. So for copper hydroxide is Cu bracket OH2. Next, we have ammonia sulfate. Okay, so ammonia is NH4 plus. For sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Okay, so let's go through NH4 plus SO4 2 minus. When you cross, okay, Take note of the earlier example. When we have a group of atoms that coming together for the ion, we need to do a bracket because for SO4 2 minus, we need to bring the 2 down. So we need to multiply the NH4 by 2. So we need to add in the bracket. For SO4, because for ammonia, which is plus, there's no need for us to, bring down, to write down the 1. Okay, so for ammonia sulfate is holding bracket NH4 2. SO4. Okay, so the next example here is calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. So for calcium is Ca2 plus, carbonate is CO3 2 minus. So let's Ca2 plus CO3 2 minus. So when we do the cross, we have Ca2, holding bracket, CO3 2. So when we you notice here, we need to simplify them down because there's a 2. So the actual calcium carbonate is CaCO3. So for calcium carbonate, the chemical formula is CaCO3. So, so these are the examples that we go through and there are some co concepts that need to understand on how to write chemical formula. Okay? However, when you go through, you realize that there are some ions that cannot be found in the periodic table. So these are the commonly used ions because they are made up of several atoms or elements so that you get the ions over here. So we go through some examples. First of all, we have ammonia, which is NH4+. This is, uh, take note here, this is a cation because it's NH4+. So we have also here, nitrate, NH3 minus, which is an ion, hydroxide, OH minus, hydrogen carbonate, HCO3 minus, we have carbonate here, we have CO3 2 minus, okay, we are erased here so you can see clearly, okay, so we have sulfate, okay, SO4 2 minus, and phosphate, PO4 3 minus, so these are the more commonly used ions that you'll come across in a lot of examples or questions. So it's good to take note of the charges so that it will help you in writing the chemical formula. So hope you learned something on writing chemical formula. That's all for today. Thank you.